that. Uh, so you are going to be introducing the MVVM Toolkit, a .NET standard library in the Windows Community Toolkit, aren't you? So uh, I know that we're, we're tight on time. So I'm just going to let both of you take it away and uh, you can introduce yourselves. Uh, and uh, yeah, best Perfect. of luck. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Great. So uh, as Leila said, thanks. Uh, we're introducing the MVVM Toolkit, which is a .NET standard library in the Windows Community Toolkit. And um, I am Michael A. Hawker. I'm also known as the XAML Llama, which is why I have this hat. I am a senior software engineer at Microsoft. I am also the maintainer of the Windows Community Toolkit, which we'll talk a little bit about in a moment. I also created an app called XAML Studio, which is a Microsoft Garage project, which you might have heard of. And with me is one of our community members. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sergio Pedri. I'm a computer engineering student and a member of the .NET Foundation and the Windows Community Toolkit org. I'm the author and maintainer of the MVM Toolkit, which we're presenting today, as well as the High Performance Package, which is another package in the Windows Community Toolkit. I'm also a UWP developer and the author of Ledger and OneLocker, which are two UWP applications in the Microsoft Store. So uh, for this presentation, we're going to quickly give you an introduction to the Windows Community Toolkit and what that's all about. Uh, and then, of course, we are going to move right into our MVVM Toolkit and telling you and sharing about what all this greatness is that you can uh, start using in your apps. Uh, Sergio is going to give uh, a lot of uh, time for the demo today to dive into our sample app and show you all the different code bits that you can use uh, with this library. And then at the very end, we're going to have our question and answer period. So you can use the hashtag .NET Conf, uh, and MVVM toolkit on Twitter to send us questions that we can go over at the end there. Uh, so the Windows Community Toolkit is a suite of controls, extensions, and helpers uh, for Windows development, though we're not just for UWP developers. We have a lot of uh, more .NET standard uh, libraries as well now, such as the MVVM toolkit we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we are part of the .NET Foundation. We are MIT licensed, and all our code uh, is up on GitHub, open sourced. Uh, we all do all of our work there uh, and planning and everything, so you can come and join us along there. Uh, we've had over 25 releases in the last four years. Uh, we've closed over a thousand issues, have had millions of NuGet package downloads with many, many commits by uh, hundreds of contributors. So we really enjoy working with everyone and building lots of great stuff there. Uh, and if you want to see what we have to offer, we actually have a sample app that you can download from the Microsoft Store that's available at aka.ms slash Windows Toolkit app. Uh, there's documentation in the app. We have a playground for each control and, and helper. Uh, you can even live edit the XAML in the application to try things out before before you put that, uh, bring everything into Visual Studio. And we actually have a new contribution guide. So once you've kind of played with things and built your own apps with them, if you want to actually give back to our project and the community, you can uh, find our new wiki at aka.ms slash WCT slash wiki. And it goes into all the details about how we run the project, how to make a contribution, uh, and details about how we actually build the toolkit and put everything together. All right, um, so here we're going to assume that all of you are already familiar with the basics of the MVVM architecture. But just to make sure we're on the same page, uh, we can do a small recap here. So the MVVM architecture is a software architectural pattern that can be used to develop applications, primarily uh, to separate concerns. The name itself, MVVM, stands for these three main components that you can see here, the model, the view, and the view model. The model represents the application domain of an application, and it contains all the various data items that an application uh, needs to work with. The view is the framework-specific layer, and it contains all the various uh, UI elements and controls that the user directly interacts with. And lastly, we have the view model, which is the layer that sits in between these two and that enables communication between them uh, using commands, bindings, and more. Uh, now, what are the actual benefits of the MVVM pattern? So first, uh, we have the fact that it uh, makes it particularly easy to use code across different platforms. So you might imagine having the entirety of your backend as a separate .NET standard or .NET 5 project, and then you would only need to reimplement the various UI layers and platform-specific services if you have any, uh, while at the same time reusing all your backend without any code changes. Uh, this is also made possible because the MVVM architecture has the entirety of the backend completely decoupled from platform agnostic behavior. So if you uh, do rely on specific platform APIs, you can just typically abstract them away and then inject them uh, through services. 
Uh, this also makes uh, the actual testing quite easy since you don't need to have uh, platform specific dependencies while doing unit testing. And if you um, actually need some platform specific APIs, you would be able to uh, mock them and then inject them as mock services, for instance. Uh, the MVVM architecture also helps with the separation of design and development since, uh, as we said, the UI layer would be completely decoupled from the actual uh, backend and the business logic of an application. So with that, it's our great pleasure to introduce the MVVM Toolkit to you. It's a modern, fast, and modular MVVM library that is part of our Windows Community Toolkit, but is .NET standard based. So it can be work for whatever apps you're trying to build, be it um, you know, UWP, WPF, Xamarin, Blazor, Uno, uh, all those different types of great apps that you can build, uh, we can use this library with. Uh, we really want it to be simple to pick up and use uh, and kind of be able to pick any different piece of the library that you want to use within your app. We don't kind of really dictate any large structures. You know, of course, you're you're using the MVVM pattern, but uh, if you want to use a small subset of the library, you're, you you have you can do that, or you can use everything that's there. It's really up to you. Uh, it's really meant to be a reference implementation, something that is. Uh, implementing all the interfaces that are alluded to in the base class library uh, and, and things that you would expect to need for building uh, with the MVVM pattern. And so, of course, we get the question, why are we building a new MVVM library now? Um, the, the main kind of instigators are uh, MVVM Lite and now Calibre and Micro are no longer being maintained. Uh, and MVVM's Lite simplicity was really um, kind of embraced by the community and was going to be missed. Uh, so we really started this discussion by, like our community started this discussion with us uh, back earlier this year. Uh, and really we took inspiration from MVVM Lite by Laurent Bagnon. And I saw that he was in, in chat, so I think he's still around. <laughs> and so uh, we, we kind of worked with him and others in the community to uh, really kind of take this project to light and, and bring it forward. Uh, and really kind of keep that simplicity uh, and but provide that really strong base and, and a great home for it to live uh, for the future. Uh, and really take advantage of a lot of the advancements that have happened in .NET development and application development since uh, a lot of frameworks have been built. Uh, really targeted, uh, you know, looking at the problem all up and optimizing for CPU and memory usage. And so you can see that with some benchmarks here we did on our Messenger uh, publish subscribe uh, class here, comparing to our predecessors of MVM Lite and Calibre and Micro, um, we really kind of get five to 14 times faster uh, performance with you know hundreds of times less memory, or if you use the strong reference that uh, Sergio is going to talk about a little bit later, you can even get zero allocation for memory for broadcast messages. All right, so um, here we can see how the actual MVM toolkit is structured. So the MVVM toolkit is composed of a number of building blocks that are organized around these four main categories that you can see here. Uh, the idea is that uh, for the most part, all of the various APIs in these four categories would not rely on any of the other APIs in the other categories. So this makes it very easy for you to just pick up and choose the individual components uh, that you need without being forced into necessarily having to use all of them. So this is the one of the actual core principles that, you, that we use to uh, build the, the MVVM toolkit from the start, as Michael mentioned. Uh, so here we we can see uh, these four uh, main categories that relate to uh, things such as uh, relaying not property change notifications, uh, commands, um, message broadcasting, and inversion of control. And we can see uh, more about all of these during the demo. So for that, let me actually switch to uh, the sample app that we have. So these are sample applications that we built to uh, showcase all uh, of these various APIs that we include in the MVVM toolkit. This application is itself built using the MVVM toolkit and that powers all the actual backend um, and all the various uh, view models that we have here. Uh, the application in this, this one in particular is running on UWP, but we also have a version of this that runs on Android, macOS, iOS, and also WASM through uh, Uno platform uh, using the same code behind, uh, sorry, using the same backend that we have here. So to quickly go through uh, the main category, starting from the uh, observable object class. So this is a, a reference implementation that we offer for the Anodify property change interface. This is an interface that's part of the base class library, but that lacks uh, and a concrete implementation there, which we're instead providing here. Uh, this interface is crucially important for the MVVM architecture since it's the one that actually powers all the notification logic for uh, properties that are being monitored by UI components so that they can uh, react dynamically and in real time as the value of this property are changed. So here we can see an example of how you would use the various APIs exposed by this type to implement observable properties. 
So here, for instance, we want to uh, implement a property that we call a name, it's a type string. And then here we're in the setter, we're invoking this set property method that's uh, inherited by the observable object class. And then in this case, we're using an overload that takes a reference to the backing field and then the new value of the property. And then this method will take care for us of uh, checking whether or not the value of the property has changed. If so, it will assign to the target field. And then it will also automatically raise all the various necessary events uh, to notify the UI components. Uh, here we have an interactive sample where we can see we have a view model with this simple property. In, in XAML here, we have a text box that binds two ways to the name property so that it's updated whenever we type. And then we have a text block that binds uh, to the same name property. And here in the sample, you can see that as I start typing, like this is a test, the value of the text block is updated dynamically as I type. And all of this is done in simply one line of code in code behind. Next, I want to mention this new uh, set property notify and completion method that we offer. Uh, this is an extension of the set property method that I just mentioned, but this one in particular is meant to be used to help out in scenarios where you have properties that are of type task. So in this case, uh, what this method will do, it will um, do exactly what set property did. So it will check whether or not the value has changed and if so, it will raise the events. But in addition to that, it will also start monitoring the task so that when it completes, it will also raise the necessary events again so that the UI components will be notified again uh, when an asynchronous operation completes. And this is actually a very useful building blocks when working with asynchronous operations and all the other uh, asynchronous uh, APIs that we include often use this uh, building block internally as well. Uh, here we have an interactive sample for that. Uh, in this case, we have a view model with a simple property, which is of type task. In the setter, we're using the set property notify and completion method, and we're uh, passing a reference uh, to the backing field, which is in this case of type task notifier, which is a type that we expose from the observable object class. And then we're passing the new value of the property, which in this case is the result uh, is being set here. So it's a task that's the uh, result of a delay of three seconds. Here in XAML, we can see uh, that we have a button that simply invoked the method. And then in, we have a text block that simply uh, binds to the status of the task. So uh, you can see from here that we're binding directly to the property of the task without the need for extra objects that act as wrappers around the uh, task instance. And here we can see in the sample that as I click the button, we display the initial status of the task. And then when it completes, the um, property change events are raised again so that the UI uh, can dynamically react to them. Moving to the second category, which includes uh, our command types. So this first category includes the uh, relay command and relay command of T uh, classes, which are two uh, reference implementation, again, for the I command interface, which is another interface uh, that's part of the base class library. In this case, this can be used to abstract methods that sit, uh, that sit in the view models so that the UI component can bind to them uh, in a loosely coupled fashion. So here in the, we have a, a sample where we have a counter property here that's observable. We have a private method that simply increments the counter. And then here we want to wrap the, this method here. So we create a new relay command instance uh, wrapping this target method. In this case, we're using the method group syntax to uh, create a delegate that maps to this method. And then we're assigning that to this I command property here. And here in XAML, we have a button that directly binds uh, its command property to the command that we have in the view model. And then we have a text block that displays the value of the counter. And here in the sample, you can see that as I click the button, the button will uh, invoke the command. The command will invoke the uh, method it's bound to, and that will increment the counter, which will raise the notification events that will be reflecting the UI. So all of this is done uh, in, with just two lines of code to declare and initialize the command, and then just one line here for the setter to um, inject the notification logic for the property. Next, uh, we also have uh, two new types of commands that are, that are meant to be used to help with asynchronous operations. So this is something that, would, uh, that was typically quite verbose to do in the past, since you would have to uh, manually track the uh, task uh, being returned by your asynchronous operation. So you would have to often manually declare properties to monitor whether or not a given operation was still in progress. Um, you would also, if you wanted, for instance, to support cancellation, you would have to manually track cancellation tokens being passed around. So here, instead, we're offering these two asynchronous command types that are meant to help with all of this and that are meant to do all of this heavy, heavy lifting for you. So here we can see how that works. Uh, we have this download text async method that simply waits three seconds and then returns uh, this hello world string. Uh, we're wrapping this using uh, creating a new instance of this async relay command here, which as we are assigning to this property, uh, which is of type async relay command. And here in XAML, we have a button that again binds uh, its command property to the uh, command that we declared in the uh, view model. We have a progress ring that in this case binds 
its uh, is active property to the is running property that's exposed uh, by the uh, async relay command interface. And then here we also want to display the status of the task as well as the result of the task, in this case using a converter. And we can see how this all works in practice. As I click the button, the progress ring starts spinning. We display the initial status of the task. And then uh, when the operation completes, the progress ring goes away automatically. The status is refreshed. And we also see the result of the operation. So all of this heavy lifting uh, is done with, again, just two lines of code in code behind. Next, we have the um, messenger types. So these are, these are helper types that can be used to um, exchange messages across different modules of an application in a loosely coupled fashion. There are actually a number of steps that are required to um, get started using these types, and you can learn more about these uh, in the docs or in our source code, but ju to just uh, give a quick overview of how that works. So the first thing you would do uh, would be to either declare a custom message type like we're doing here, or to use one of the base message types that we include in uh, the MVN toolkit. Next, you would need to uh, register a recipient so that it would um, invoke some um, code when a message of that type is received. In this case, we're invoking receive, receive, re register here. Uh, we're registering this uh, instance as the recipient. We uh, indicate that we want to uh, listen for messages of this type. And in this case here, we're using a Lambda expression to define the code that will be invoked whenever this uh, recipient receives an instance of that message. Then we need to broadcast a new, a new message. So we, to, to do that, we invoke the send method here by passing a new uh, instance of, the, of this uh, message type. Here we have another uh, interactive sample to showcase how this works. Um, here we have a sender view model that has a username property that uh, simply toggles between Bob and Alice. And every time it does so, it also broadcasts uh, a new instance of this username change message with the new value of the property. And then that message type is, is um, received by the second view model uh, that you can see here is registering uh, handler for this message type. And uh, whenever a message is received, it will grab the value from the message and use that to update the uh, local username uh, property so that it's kept in sync uh, with the one from the other view model. And here in the sample, you can see that as I click the button, the uh, first module, which is this one here, uh, will toggle the property between Bob and Alice. And at the same time, it will send a message that will be received by the second module, uh, which will read the value to update the local uh, value of the property. Lastly, we also have a section about inversion of control. So in this case, we decided not to uh, include code to actually implement a service provider uh, in our library, since we figured there are already um, quite a few very commonly used um, libraries that are meant to do specifically this, such as the uh, Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection Library. Uh, so instead, we're offering a simple IOC class, which is, is which is a wrapper around the iService provider interface. And that's primarily meant to be um, used as a helper for developers either using the service locator pattern or for developers that are migrating from MVM Lite, uh, which had this um, specific type. But uh, we'll also be offering docs that showcase how you can get started with either using the service locator pattern or the uh, dependency injection pattern. So you'll be free to choose uh, whatever approach you think uh, works best in your specific scenario. Lastly, here we also have a small step-by-step -step guide that showcases how you can uh, go about putting together all these various building blocks into an actual um, small uh, working um, example. So in this case here, we have doc that showcase uh, how to set up the various view models, how to uh, define uh, services, including platform-specific ones. Here we have a service that uses uh, REST APIs. Um, we have docs that showcase how to build the various UI component to bind to the backend. And then here we have a final working sample. In this case, it's a very simple uh, Reddit browser that simply lets you uh, load posts from a collection of um, subreddits you can choose from. And then whenever you uh, click on a post, a message is broadcast to the second module, uh, which will display the title, the image, and then a sample text. So then to uh, go back to the actual presentation, um, I want to call out that there are uh, a number of um, exclusive features uh, that are uh, included in the MVVM toolkit. So you can learn more about them by uh, reading our uh, source code on GitHub or the um, our docs, but just to name some of them. So the first one would be that uh, we offer built-in support for um, writing view models that wrap uh, objects that themselves do not implement the iNotify property change uh, interface. So uh, basically, you, you would have an overload of the set um, property method that will allow you to inject the notification logic on top of that uh, in just one line of code. Next, we have the uh, set property notify on completion method, which I mentioned during the demo. And for this, I want to thank the .NET native team um, 
that helped us uh, both uh, design the final API service that would ship, uh, as well as testing the actual code to make sure it worked fine on both UWP and on the .NET native runtime as well in particular. Uh, we also wrote a blog post about this if you're interested, and that's linked in our docs. Next, we have a new observable validator class that uh, implements the iNotify data error info interface. And for this, I want to thank the WinUI team that helped us with the initial implementation of this type, as well as with code review uh, during development. Uh, we also have these two new asynchronous relay command types that also support cancellation uh, that I went through during the demo. We have a new strong reference messenger type that Michael mentioned. This is basically uh, an optional messenger type that uh, exposes the same API surface as the default one, which uses uh, weak references, and that's basically acts the same way as the one from MVM Lite and Caliber Micro. But this one is specifically meant for application that heavily relies on having a huge number of messages and the messages being exchanged at all times. So uh, these strong reference message types um, require some extra care, as uh, it requires you to manually unregister recipients when you no longer need them. But in exchange for that, it's over twice as fast, and in particular offers uh, non-allocation for broadcast operations. So uh, it lets you send even millions of messages without allocating even a single byte of memory. Lastly, uh, we also support uh, multiple ways of actually declaring uh, message handlers. So uh, you can do that either manually through a Lambda expression, which is uh, the same that you would do in MVM Lite, or you can do that by implementing the iRecipient interface, and then, um, which is basically the same approach that uh, was used in uh, Calibre Micro. So we support both, and you're just free to uh, pick the one that you, you think works best for you, or the one that you feel the most comfortable working with. Great. Thanks, Sergio. And of course, the great news is that you can download our preview today at aka.ms slash MVVM toolkit. That is the link to our sample and doc repo, which has all the, the demo that uh, Sergio showed you and uh, info about how to get started. The packages are up on NuGet. Um, it's you know really great to see the sample app itself being bit, built with the toolkit. We already have an Uno sample that's in the works. Uh, we have seen people in the community creating samples and working with the toolkit uh, in their own projects for WPF and for Blazor. Uh, and so we really kind of want to reach out to, to some folks and would love some help in those other uh, technologies to, to have official samples within our structure as well. So that's something that we want to work on. We will ship this officially as part of our 7.0 release of the Windows Community Toolkit. That should hopefully be coming in the next month. We haven't quite uh, nailed down the date for this year yet. If it doesn't happen before Christmas, uh, it'll happen first thing in 2021. Uh, we've also been working with the Windows Template Studio folks. Uh, they have an issue open there uh, to track uh, integrating the MVVM toolkit into their templates uh, to replace um, the, the libraries that are um, no longer maintained. Uh, so now it's time for our Q&A. So you can tweet and use the hashtag .NET Conf and hashtag MVVM Toolkit. Uh, you can also follow uh, myself at Zamalama and Sergio at Sergio Pedri uh, if you have any other questions or want to engage with us in the future. And uh, we will bring Layla back and uh, answer some of your questions. Awesome. Hey, Sergio and Michael. Thank you so much for that. It was really great to see. We've had uh, some Thank questions, of course. Uh, we've had El Buño, uh answering a lot of the questions, though, so he's beaten <laughs> me to he's it. Great. But... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I do have one uh, on Twitter. I'm going to read it so we can see uh, your lovely faces on here and not go to my desktop share. Uh, so the first one here is, does the MVVM toolkit contain means for screen composition and screen activation or deactivation? If not, are you planning to add something for it? Uh, Michael, do you want to take that or should I? Oh, <laughs> I was hoping you'd take that. Uh, that was a tr tricky one. I mean, I, so we're trying to be framework agnostic. So we're really trying to focus on the core elements uh, that are built into C Sharp uh, or, or .NET, .NET, .NET rather, um, and, and really be platform agnostic. So we're not thinking a lot about the direct kind of helpers or anything for specific UI patterns or um, kind of transitions, like we don't have like a navigation service built in or anything like that. We're giving you that kind of those bare ba bones um, building blocks that you can use to build up your view models uh, and make those all .NET standard so that they can be used regardless of whatever you, UI framework you're using. Is that a good summary, Sergio? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, Great. I mean, we, we totally expect people to build upon this maybe and even build other libraries that they could uh, potentially add some of those framework types of components for specific things like WPF or UWP or Blazor, et cetera. 
So I think here we go. Uh, we have another one. I managed to share my screen and keep us all here. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, from Alan Natalini, great presentation by Sergio Pedri about WCT and VVM. Uh, and just a thank you, which is uh, what I'm going to say oh, as God. well, because uh, <laughs> that was great. And uh, I really appreciate it. So uh, it's been great to have you both on. Uh, so Michael, I think you can probably go to bed now. What time is it for you? About half two uh, in the morning? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for staying up late to be with us. And Sergio, you're in Rome, so yeah, you're very ready for a coffee. <laughs> Uh, well, I really appreciate uh, you both coming in and, and talking to us all. And I think, uh, oh, I found one more question uh, on the Twitch chat. Uh, Oxfitty69, it's for .NET Standard 2.0. Is it compatible with .NET 5? That's the yeah, last question. Absolutely. So uh, at, the, at the moment, it's, uh, we're multi-targeting .NET Standard 2.0 and 2.1 in particular so that we can use some specific APIs for some internal implementation to optimize things, specifically for the weak messenger type that uh, on .NET Standard 2.1 uses the uh, conditional weak table and other details. Uh, and we do plan to also uh, look into uh, multi-targeting .NET 5 to add some specific features, features in the future. But um, regardless of that, uh, if you're using uh, .NET 5, you will be able to just use the library as is, and it will pick automatically the .NET Standard 2.1 target, and it will work just fine. So yeah, absolutely. That's great. Well, that's all the questions we have time for. If you have more questions for Michael and Sergio, make sure that you tag them on Twitter and you'll get to them when you wake up, won't you, Michael? And Sergio, yeah. you might get to them this afternoon. So yeah. uh, without any further ado, thank you so much, both of you. Have a great rest of your day, middle of the night. And uh, thank you so much. So bye. Thanks, Lana.